Okay, so this is going to be a very, very simple project, but it will have a huge impact on my workflow here in the shop and is definitely worth doing. Now, all I really need to do is make a manifold or a plenum that will allow me to hook the individual dust collection hoses coming off of each tool up to that manifold and I'll connect that manifold to my dust collector. Now that way I won't have to constantly try to remember to switch the hoses out as I move from tool to tool like you saw me doing in the previous scene. Even though this is such a simple project, it will impact my work here in the shop in multiple ways. First off, it will increase efficiency by eliminating the need to have to switch out hoses as I move from tool to tool. And that's just a huge waste of time. And it will eliminate that problem that actually happens to me pretty frequently is where I just completely forget to switch out the hose and I use a tool like the table saw and dust just goes everywhere. It makes a huge mess and it also gets in the air. And with that in mind, it will also increase the environmental health here in the shop by reducing the amount of dust that gets in the air accidentally by me forgetting to switch the hoses out. So less dust in the air, less dust in my lungs and less dust all over the place to clean up. Definitely worth doing. My entire dust collection system here in the shop runs off two and a half inch dust collection hose like this. And I will put links in the description to the dust collection hose that I use, as well as a shopping list for some of the parts and pieces that you can pick up at your local hardware store, like some of these PVC pipe fittings. If your dust collector runs off something other than two and a half inch dust collection hose, it's not a problem, don't worry about it. You'll just have to make some modifications to the size of the pipe and some of the fittings that you'll need. But the general concept and the design will pretty much be the same. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cut several sections of this two inch schedule 40 PVC pipe, which that works almost perfectly for two and a half inch dust collection hose. So let's go ahead and head over to the miter saw and we'll cut this pipe up. So I did do some experimentation trying to figure out how long to make the individual sections of the straight pipe to connect the manifold together. And I found that three inches seems like it works pretty well. The pipe will go into the fittings about three quarters of an inch, give or take, depending on how far you push it in when you connect them together. So you'll be left with about one and a half to two inches of straight pipe in between each fitting. Now the number of sections of three inch pipe that you need to cut will depend on how many tools you're hooking up. So easiest way to do it is just to set up a stop block on your miter saw to three inches or whatever you decide. You can make it a little bit shorter or longer if you like, but set up a stop block and just cut as many pieces as you need. And a little bonus here, you get to see this general concept and practice here of what we're going to end up with because I did do a smaller version of the setup over here. Now I only have two tools hooked up. I've got the miter saw and the drill press hooked up with these blast gates. So instead of having to constantly switch the hoses out like I was having to do before, I just open and close the blast gate and then I just get to work. Okay, now that we got those cut, we just need to assemble the manifold. Assembly's pretty easy, just wipe off some of the shavings so you get a good seal. And then what you do is you take some PVC primer and PVC cement, you can get this at the hardware store. Put a little bit of the purple primer on the mating surfaces, so that would be the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting on both sides. And then you apply some of the PVC cement, same way both mating surfaces, push them together, give them a little twist so it smears that PVC cement in and then hold it for a few seconds. It doesn't take very long for it to cure up, but you do want to hold it because they can kind of slide apart on you and then you're done. Then you can move on to the next one. Stuff stinks. Okay, now on two of these, now this is just for the straight pipe for the manifold and I'll show you what we're going to do for the, for the other pipes. But on two of these, we only need to put the primer and the glue on one end because one end we're going to hook the dust collection hose up to. The other end we're just going to cap in case we need to expand and add more ports on it later. But for now, you only need to do one end of these guys. One thing you want to keep in mind though is to keep the kind of the orientation of the the angle of the fitting here the same you don't want them alternating we're going to kind of try to maximize the flow by having everything flow one direction you know the dust collection will suck from here and it'll just kind of go that direction as opposed to having to come up this way and then get sucked back that way so you just want to keep that in mind and make sure the orientation on these is all the same 
as you, as you build the manifold. And then you just kind of carry on like that. Okay, after all that's done, you should end up with something that looks about like this. Now the next thing we need to do is a similar process to what we just did, but now we need to just do one little short section here like that. And again, we'll only need to put the primer and the glue on one side because on the opposite side here is where the hoses will connect to the individual tools. Okay, now that's done, you should end up with something that looks like this. And then how the system works is have one of these caps here at this end to close this end off. And the reason I'm using a rubber cap here is in case I need to expand this, I can just remove this cap, add another fitting and add another hose for another tool if I get one. But for now, we'll just seal that end up with a rubber cap. The hose that goes to the dust collector will go on this end like this on down to the dust collector. And then the individual hoses for each individual tool will connect like that. And as you can see, it'll suck the dust of that direction towards the dust collector. That's why we need to have those all sweep in the same direction. Now the next thing I need to do is just mount this. I'm going to mount this under the workbench here, mount it up with some of this plastic hanging strap. You just, it's a plastic strap with little holes in it and you can use screws to hang something like this. Attach all the individual tools with the hoses install these glass gates so I can open and close these. And these are important for a system like this because if you just had all of these open, then it wouldn't have much suction because it would be drawing suction from each tool because each end of the tool would be open like this. You wanna close off all the tools except for the one that you're working on and then use the blast gates to do that. And again, check the description. I'll leave links in the description so you can pick up some of these. I found these on Amazon. They were a pretty good deal and you will need them for a system like this. Let's hook up some of these hoses. Now this two and a half inch hose is 20 feet long, I think. I found it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to this hose too. And it was a really good price. It was about, if I remember correctly, about half the price that I could find anywhere else. And it's nice and long too. So you can get a long section and cut it to whatever lengths you need instead of being kind of you know, pigeonholed into only being able to choose a three foot hose or five foot hose or a 10 foot hose like most of the retailers. I think they even had longer hoses too. So if you got a lot to do, you know, maybe check this stuff out and you can customize it to whatever size and length you need. So I wanna keep these hoses fairly short but I do want a little bit of slack so I can kind of move them around a little bit without having to disconnect the hose. The shorter the hose, the better because you're going to lose less suction over a shorter distance than if you make this thing longer than it needs to be. So the way I'm going to assemble these is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just more or less have the, the blast gates kind of free float. I'll connect a short hose to each one and just have the blast gate right at the tool. So I think I'll cut this one right about here. And then the way I cut these is I just cut it with a hacksaw through the plastic part till I get down to the steel winding and just snip it off with a pair of linesman pliers. As you can tell, I'm being real scientific about this. <laughs> Gotta be precise. One of the things you may run into building a dust collection system like this is a seemingly unending variety of the size of the dust collection ports that you'll find on tools. The dust collection port on this spindle sander was the perfect size for a two and a half inch dust collection hose. Slid right on, no adapters needed, perfect fit, done deal. But on this combination strip sander disc sander that I have here, the dust collection port is much, much smaller and isn't even close to being able to work with a two and a half inch dust collection hose. But there is a pretty simple way around that. You can usually find one of these rubber reducers in the plumbing section at the hardware store that will work. Now this dust collection port here will take a one and a half inch by two and a half inch rubber reducer. The one and a half inch size will fit on there just fine. And then you can build your system on from there. Now this particular tool 
has an additional challenge built into it. It has two different dust collection ports. It has a dust collection port for the strip sander side and another dust collection port for the disc sander side. So in order to maximize the dust collection at the part of the tool that I'm using, I'll need to install blast gates at both ports. But there is a silver lining having to use these rubber reducers is that the blast gates will fit right on here and then I can connect my hoses and go from there. One little tip for putting things together like this, sometimes it's a really tight fit and you just feel like you can't get it on there. One thing you can do is just take a little squirt bottle with some water and a little bit of dish soap and spray it on and that light film of dish soap will help kind of lubricate the fitting and it will help it just slide right on. See? Just that easy. Hey, look at that. I made an octopus. Well, this project is pretty much finished. I have the manifold installed, have all the hoses connected, the blast gates are in place. It's pretty much a wrap. I do have this one loose hose here, but this is for the table saw. I can't connect it until I'm done working in here and I can move the table saw back. But there is one last thing that I need to do before I can officially call this project a wrap, and that is install a ground wire. Now, I've heard that when you're using PVC pipe for a dust collection system like this, static electricity can build up inside the pipe and can actually create a spark and start a fire with the sawdust that's inside the pipe. Don't know if that's true, and I don't even know if that's such a big concern with such a short run like this one, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. I'll just go ahead and install a ground wire to give that static electricity a chance to discharge. So hooking up a ground wire is pretty easy. You just need to take a ground wire with an eye on the end of it like that, and then drive a screw through the eye in through the pipe, and then just make sure that the screw is long enough to actually penetrate through into the pipe and that will give the static electricity a chance to discharge through the screw and out through the ground wire and then just connect the other end of the ground wire to a ground and you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now and then we can call this project a wrap like this. No idea what I just said. Up on the jam right. So this is... The, 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 the design of the manifold is pretty simple.